All right, guys, we're back now. We're now on part two, and part two is going to be installing your flight controller. So we just left off with the frame being put back together, and now what we want to do is let's go ahead and take the top of the frame off. So let's remove the eight screws here. We're just going to set them aside over here, just like this, and we're going to get we're going to bring the flight controller in and get it situated on this build so that we can get uh, ready to wire it up. All right, so let's just go ahead and remove those screws. Okay, now we're going to take the top plate off. We can set that aside. I'll just set it up here. And we're going to take these side camera plates off as well because we won't need those right now. What we're going to be focused on is uh, our flight controller itself. So let me go ahead and grab that real quick and show you exactly what we're going to be working with. So this is a GHF 420 AIO. And what that means, the AIO stands for all-in-one. All-in-one here refers to the fact that the actual electronic speed controller is built into this, um, uh, into this particular flight controller as well. And it has all the other features you need in order to be able to function uh, with just this and a video transmitter like this one that we're going to be using. Okay. So what we want to do first is we want to notice that there's an arrow on this board and the arrow needs to be pointing towards the front. And remember, <coughs> if you remember, the front of the drone is, is the one that has these uh, little slits in it. Or you can remember the back has these big cutouts. So this arrow needs to be facing that way and you need to have the entire frame pointed away from you to where their back is towards you. What you want to do is you want to look at these inner holes right here. So as you can see, these inner holes, if you were to take a ruler and you were to measure, they would be two centimeters or basically 20 millimeters apart. It's 20 millimeters that way and it's 20 millimeters that way. It's a perfect square on these inner holes. The outside holes are 30.5 millimeters apart and that's for a bigger flight controller. In this case, we're gonna be using the 20 millimeter holes and that's gonna line up with the 20 millimeter holes that are right here. Right here, you're gonna have a button that is gonna be your boot button. You're not gonna use that, but you can use it as a point of reference as to where this board needs to be laid out. And here is your USB port. This is a micro USB USB port. The next thing you're going to notice is that you have your motor wires colored in yellow, red, and black, and that is repeated throughout this board. Yellow is going to be the outside, and then black is going to be the inside, and then red is going to be the center motor wire. All right. On this side right here, if you're looking at the board and you mount it like this, to the right side or opposite of the USB is your receiver connection, and that is where you will take your receiver when it's time, and you will plug it directly in here so that you can have your receiver wired up to your flight controller. On the front of your flight controller, you're going to see two sets of wires. This longer wire, this longer wire with the wider uh, connection actually plugs into your VTX, just like that. While the shorter wire with the smaller connection plugs into your camera, just like this. So then you will be using all those in just a little bit. But right now, let's just go ahead and get the flight controller mounted. So to get started, what we're going to want to do is put your flight controller aside and go over and grab those 20 millimeter screws that I showed you when this video started. And we're going to start putting those in right here, just like this. Now, once you put them in and you've got your frame upside down like that so they don't fall out, hold the screws with one hand and turn the frame over. If you notice, if you let go, they will not fall through because the frame is not high enough off the table to have them completely fall through. And now just position the flight controller so that the screws go inside each of the holes, each of the mounting holes of the, uh, of the flight controller here. Take your time, make sure they go in all the way. And if you want, if you can do it without losing the screws, you can tilt the board up or the, the frame up and just kind of feed them in just like this. Just make sure the screws don't fall out. And what you should be left with is something that looks just like this. And there you go. So this is gonna be your flight controller mounted right here. And for the time being, what you can do so that the screws don't fall out is you can take these fasteners, which will be used later on, but for right now, you can just take them and you can put them on these screws so that the board stays in place. And let me just go ahead and get started with that. Just take your time because they're very tiny and they're kind of they can be a little difficult to kind of screw on there but once you get them started there that'll hold we'll go to the next one i may tilt this up just so it's easier for me to get to these again just try to make sure that the screws don't fall out but if they do you can just put them back in there with no problem There 
go. That's two. That's three. And then we'll do our last one here. All right. There you go. So now we've got, you don't have to tighten it down any more than that. We just want to make sure that nothing can fall out. And that is how you're going to mount your flight controller. So to look at it again, just make sure that you've got the front of your frame facing this direction. You've got the back of your frame towards you. And you've got this arrow facing away from you. You've got your USB port on your left. And you've got your wires for your receiver on your right. And your wires should look uh, yellow, red, black. And then from the outside in, again, on the back side, yellow, red, black. Once you get to this point, you can stop here because the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to mount the motors and plug them in and get this part started for the next part. So we'll see you in just a second.